Hello, my name is Megan Chen, and I've been a practicing speech therapist for the past 24 years. Today, I'd like to share some information about what the latest brain scanning techniques are telling us about the brains of people who stutter versus people who don't stutter. Okay, if you're a person who has a stuttering problem, what you've probably tried to do is to actually look around at people around you who don't stutter and try to learn from them. So maybe you see that, you know, they are talking very confidently, they're able to articulate what they say, and they seem to do it all without thinking. And so a lot of people think that, okay, the key to stopping stuttering is to actually just build up my confidence. Now, there are a few problems with this approach. Okay, one is that only 1% of the population stutters. And this is quite consistent over different countries, different races, and so forth. All right, 1%. So the other 99% of people around you, your friends, your family, may not know what it's like to have a stuttering problem. And number two, um, there's been a lot of research on stuttering and entire books and courses, you know, have been um, written about this. And so far, there's been no concrete evidence at all to indicate that people who stutter have a confidence issue or that they are different psychologically from people who don't stutter. There is no particular personality trait that, you know, kind of like differentiates people who stutter from those that don't. They are not more neurotic. They are not more um, uh, worrying. They are not more, you know, um, passive. They are not more introverted and so forth. Okay, so there's been no evidence at all that um, confidence or personality actually play a part. And the third problem is that what we have found through scientific research is that there's a lot of evidence that for people who stutter, even while you don't hear any stuttering, their speech is essentially different from people who don't stutter. Okay, let me repeat that again because it bears repeating. If you are a person who stutters, when you're producing speech, when you're talking, even when people don't hear any stuttering, your speech is actually very different from the speech of other people who don't have a stuttering problem. So they have found this um, about even 20, 30 years back. Um, the aerodynamics in the speech tract are different. The way the muscles, the speech muscles are activated are different and so forth. Okay, and now with modern technology and the possibility of scanning brains while people are talking, it's been established that there are very, very fundamental differences. So what I'd like to do today is to share uh, information about those differences. And I think more importantly, hopefully, give you more uh, optimism and hope that by learning this information, you'll be able to apply them and actually take action about what are the things you can do to improve your fluency and reduce your stuttering. Okay? So what um, scientific research has found is that there are three main areas that are involved when a person is actually speaking fluently. One area is more towards the front part of the brain. Okay? The technical names more like the motor cortex, the areas that are involved with what we call motor planning and execution. In other words, when I'm talking to you right now, I'm moving my vocal cords, I'm using my vocal cords, I'm using my tongue, I'm using my lips, using different speech muscles, and that's how I produce different sounds. So there's a part of the brain that obviously is more concerned with the what we call the motor planning, planning all the different movements and actually executing them. So this area is obviously involved in producing speech. Now there's a second area of the brain that's involved as well, and that's actually more towards the sides near the ears. So they are uh, related to what we call auditory feedback. In other words, how you hear yourself or how you perceive yourself. If you've ever tried recording your speech, you will know that you, know, you don't hear your own speech the way other people do. When you record your speech on playback, it's like, oh gosh, did I sound like that? It's a my voice, you know. So um, auditory perception or auditory feedback is about how you hear your own speech. And again, it's been very clearly established that by um, playing around and manipulating how you hear your speech, let's say if you put on earphones and uh, you go through what is called delayed auditory feedback or DAF, delayed auditory feedback, and you hear your own speech, but play it back maybe uh, with a split second delay. 
If you manipulate that, you can actually uh, produce fluent speech in people who normally stutter. And in fact, the converse is true. You could do that with people who normally do not stutter and it would actually induce stuttering. Very interesting, huh? So what it tells us is that the feedback, the auditory feedback definitely has an impact on how you produce fluent speech. Okay, so we'll cover two areas, you know, what we call the motor execution, the area of the brain that has to do with the motor physical speech movements, and the second area, the um, auditory feedback area, so how you perceive yourself. Uh, and the third area is actually deeper in the brain, that's related to how the brain processes and controls what we call sequencing. So if I say a long word, let's say um, statistics or international, all right, international, there are five sounds and we produce them in a particular sequence. So you want to make sure that one sound follows another in fluent speech. You don't trip up, you don't repeat sounds, you don't get stuck on a certain sound, right? And there are, um, when we say a word like international, again, you don't say it in a monotonous way. You say international, so you're going to emphasize certain sounds. So again, there is a part of the air, uh, a part of the brain, sorry, that's related to how the brain controls um, sequencing and rhythm. So that's involved, and that actually shows a lot of our brain activity as well when a person who doesn't stutter is producing fluent speech. Okay. So what does this tell us about uh, you know, if you have a stuttering problem, how do you make use of this information and try to use this to help you? Let me relate that to um, some of the things I do with my clients, my speech therapy clients in our speech therapy session. So first, uh, number one, the area of the brain, you know, we know that the brain actually gets involved in the physical speech muscle actions. So how you move your tongue, how you move your vocal cords and so forth. So one of the things that uh, many fluency programs actually cover is what we call speech restructuring. Kind of like rewiring how you think about your speech. Okay, so rather than just producing a sound, if you're trying to say a word and you stutter, and then um, you might find that, oh my goodness, you know, I get stuck, I can't produce a sound, or I trip over it. If you didn't have information about how you produce a sound, let's say you're trying to say a word that starts with P, maybe you're trying to say in a project and you get stuck, you block on P sound. Um, okay, this sounds a little bit more visible because you can actually see that, okay, you're using your lip muscles, but that's not the case for all the different sounds in English. You know, there are 26 letters of the alphabet, there are lots of different speech sounds. So, the more information you have about, okay, how do I produce different sounds? If I get stuck on a, le uh, a word that starts with letter P sound, or it gets, you know, I get stuck on a word that starts with letter S sounds, or different sounds, vowel sounds, A, E, I, O, U, or the rest of the um, letters of the alphabet, B word, a C word, and so forth, okay, how do I actually produce those sounds? The fact that you're able to consciously replicate those movements will go a long way towards helping you to gain some of that confidence so that you know that, okay, if you get stuck, you are not just, okay, I have no control. I'm just going to try my luck again and just, you know, barge forward and say the word and see if I get lucky this time and I'm able to say the sound or the word fluently. All right, so that's how it will help you. And that's one of the things that I work with uh, my clients to try to improve their grasp of what the speech movements are. Now, the second area, auditory feedback. So it's really important to, to also build some um, work on how you listen to yourself. And you could do that through various means. Obviously, I cover that a little bit more when I'm working with my clients in speech therapy, but it's really good for you to be aware of that. So thinking about it, just consciously being aware of how you hear yourself would be a big step as well. In fact, what research has found is that um, for people who stutter, there's actually an overactivity in the motor areas, the areas related to physical movement, and an underactivity in the areas related to auditory feedback. So simply put, you can think of it as, okay, the areas you do with like, producing the sounds 
are overly active and then what you want to try to do is to make sure that you're also activating uh, actively listening to yourself that is really useful for another purpose too because after a while uh, like I was saying just now, one of the important parts of speech therapy is to actually learn to reconstruct how you produce sounds so they consciously produce those speech movements. But if that's the only thing you do, you're going to find that it's very um, challenging and it's very difficult because you will feel as if you are walking a tightrope all the time. You're trying to talk consciously and you think about, okay, how do I produce this sound? All the while, while you know, talking to somebody else. And most of the time, it's really difficult to keep up this effort. What most of my clients find is that in order to be able to reduce the stuttering successfully, um, after a while, they all tell me that what they've developed is that ability to kind of like recognize when, okay, it feels as if I'm going to have difficulty with this sound. Okay, so they can recognize from the muscle activity and how they speak that, okay, I think I might need to apply what I call my speech therapy techniques. So this makes it a little bit easier. You're using a kind of like an auto-correction technique rather than feeling like you're walking in tightrope all the time. Okay, the third area we talk about, okay, we know that um, one area of the brain that's involved if you're trying to speak fluently is the area related to sequencing, you know, and rhythm and so forth. So, okay, this is one technique that you can, you can probably apply straight away. So the next time you find yourself having some difficulty saying a long word, international or statistics, you know, or uh, hypothetical, whatever, or it could be your own name or somebody else's name, Try this technique and see if you can emphasize and consciously emphasize one particular syllable. So again, using the word international as an example, rather than making it flat. Okay, for people who um, stutter, sometimes because you worry about stuttering, you're more cautious and you might say words like that. You go into the word with um, more uh, caution and you say in a flat way, international, you know, something like that. I'm just exaggerating so that you get the point. But you can try to, again, I'll emphasize the technique. So you say something like international and you really emphasize one of the syllables. What this does is that it creates kind of like a momentum, a moving momentum, international. And you may find that it's much easier for you to achieve fluent speech that way. Okay, so this is a very, very quick, brief um, summary of some of the latest research but like I said, I feel that a lot of it ties in with the things that work in speech therapy sessions with my clients. So I'd like to share that with you. I hope you found you know, some of the information useful. And if you've gotten something out of this video, please click like and also subscribe to our channel. If you like more information about how speech therapy can help you stop your stuttering, please click on the information icon on the top right hand corner. Thank you.